The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. Hope you're having a good morning. God, I can't believe it's going to be below freezing five days in a row here. Uncommon for March. You guys up north are not sympathetic with me right now, I'm sure. Here we go. Let's take a look at gold. Um, you know, talked about staying away from this for a while, waiting for something to uh, to kind of grab onto from the long side. And this is our weekly view, and this is kind of the way things work uh, as far as these reversals back into profile sometimes. And um, you have to, again, take this at a face value type mechanism when it comes to trading, in my opinion. And here's the daily. And, you know, talked yesterday about, you know, wasn't really – time to start trying to pick anything up on sale when it comes to gold still feel the same way kind of reversing a little bit this morning um i did look at the 240s here so you know uh this is the drill on you know kind of backing and filling you know gold could move back up to 1215 but, you know, until we get some new information on the dailies, I'm not going to feel real rosy about stepping in right now. Um, we've obviously bounced about $6 an ounce in the last, damn, what is it, uh, hour? But as we look at gold right now, um, it could possibly move up to 1215. You've got something to base a trade off of on the long side here on the 240s, 1206 with stops below. So that's kind of a decent risk reward if you're trying to trade that from the long side. I'm kind of blocking out the short side myself. So that's the only trade in my mind. So, you know, that being said, we're going to take a look at the dollar and see what kind of uh, default little mechanisms are going on here relative to gold. So, you know, the dollar could retrace back up into 102.20. Um, again, you watch this show. I'm not such a huge fan of, of being long the dollar right now. So I'm looking for short opportunities, even though they're kind of contra trade opportunities. But uh, right now, you know, considering that the dollar, and I'm going to go back to the 240s here, considering that the dollar could retrace up some here, you know, gold eh, might be 1206 stops below if you're going to pick a battle on short term on gold. That might not be a terribly bad idea. But again, you ha don't have any real changes going on in the dailies on gold so probably should go light on a trade like that if you're going to do it the vix hey wow we're still at 12 earth shattering news there crude you know this kind of you know broke me yesterday and now we're at a buy point again in my opinion 48.67 on the april contract but that's what stops are for that didn't hold you guys know that but we're bouncing a little bit off this 4867 that's why it's okay to try it again higher or try it again lower and right now we've reached a low of 4879 that number is 4867 we're bouncing a little bit so now you've got a decent place to orient stops right there um, if you want to try crude again from the long side if you guys were short hallelujah that's awesome but uh i got stopped out of this trade personally it's been something that has been a really decent long opportunity when it happens straight for a while but again that's what stops are for and now you've got something else to base along against 4867 so uh, keep that in mind these uh, treasuries this is this is something else here huh let's this is the 10 year again a weekly close is going to be some writing on the wall for this thing and the more I Try not to listen to this, but the more I listen to folks, the more I hear everybody on one side of the trade now on the short side, which is sometimes not good. Here's the third year. Um, only thing that scares me is that. But, you know, the third year, again, having a weekly close below this 148.29, that's the big number there. Any retrace, if we get a weekly close, any retracements back above are to be sold. Um, 
again, make sure you put your stops in. We're getting a little bit of a bounce this morning, but not much on the 30-year. Shanghai, overseas, coming off a little bit, but actually holding the bottom of the profile still in the daily. I still like this from the long side, the CSI 300. Silver, about the same situation as gold, just nothing really you know, to really hang on to down here. It's got a 240, about the same situation as gold, 1719. Uh, and your up top target right now will be 1735 and a half. So that's kind of the way silver's bouncing. We're going to look at uh, May beans just to cover some commodities here. And here's the weekly on May beans. You've kind of got the back the truck up scene again at $10 a bushel. If they, if we get down here, I'll, and we start consolidating down here. That's usually another continuation pattern down, so keep that in mind. And John from Philadelphia, I have yet to get my friend to commit to come on this show to talk about that short side versus the long side. He's scared. Anyway, uh, the banks, you know, let's, let's take a look at the S&Ps and before we get into some of the sectors. I know, I know. He's a he's a wussy. That's not one of those blocked words, is it? I hope not, Al. Anyway, you're not, and he is. Anyway, S and P's uh, talked about this yesterday, kind of two days ago. Finally, had a close below into the profile. Kind of went back and retested. Talked about this possibly drifting back into 2343. You know, it's a scary trade relative to what this S&P seemingly just constantly has a bid in it, but that's the numbers to pay attention to, 2343 and 2371. Talked about that being a really good resistance area yesterday, 2371 to 2373. We reached a high of 2373. So why was that the case? It was closing the box and come back up and use that 7173 area's resistance. We talked about that a little bit. Talked about that being a relatively ripe trade as long as we had two days ago closed below 2371 and that happened and uh, retraced back up and that's kind of similar to that uh, gold weekly trade so that's that's the way I look at that all right so I see some folks in the den talking about crude um, I just want to reiterate that you know we're we're down into another area to pick a battle here um, on the long side, if you've been short, you should probably be taking some off the table here. Not bouncing significantly off this number yet, but um, not a bad risk reward. And should be looking at that as a target rich environment for shorts. Enough's enough. Here we go. That being said, let's take a look at the XLE. And uh, <clears throat> you got to figure this morning, let me go back to crude really quick. Actually, we'll catch it on the break here. Uh, XLE talk, talked about there wasn't a lot of, you know, direction within the CTF, and there were some strong old stocks, no question, to try to mitigate that uh, sell-off in crude. But uh, we'll talk about that when we get back, folks. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. 
Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. So, Taking a look at some all stocks, all sector stocks. Exxon Mobil took it took a beat, and obviously yesterday, as the uh, the old market was coming off, it's coming off again this morning. So, talked about this one, kind of waiting for. Uh, you know, we we had talked about actually on the weekly this kind of signal right here happening last week. Might be some time to take some off the table. And wow, did that uh, flush again pretty quickly? All uh, definitely had a bearing on that so you had a stock that was relatively weak and then oil comes off and you know looking for reasons to sell it again i guess uh that gave you a couple of reasons this week but it, it's always okay to take some off the table and that's what that long term you know new profile tempting the peers all about but uh as you can see the the weak stock two days ago rallied up into resistance again and um man this is uh a lot of market capitalization shaved off here. And looking at the ninth, we've got, looks like we're trading about 80, 80 and a half this morning. So down a little bit more, eclipsing weekly and daily unfair lows. And this thing could be a little bit in the abyss here. So the only way to pick up ExxonMobil is if, you know, oil can stay above this weekly unfair low, of course. And maybe this thing's you know, start showing some stability there and we get back above this 81 and a half area, which, which is, you know, 81, 10, 81, 11, 81 and a half. That would have to kind of be surpassed again on the upside to really think about even nibbling on this. But, you know, it's been a weak stock in a sector that's been sideways at best lately. And, uh, there's probably better longs out there than this one. Sorry, typed in the wrong symbol. Let's take a look at Southwestern Energy. This is one we used to follow pretty closely here. Um, this is, you know, this is our weekly on SWN. So that kind of breakage right there, okay to get back in the water and, uh, definitely okay to be short not okay to be long here this has been one if you just kind of forget the profiles for a second 
it's been a stock that's been relatively weak, especially lately. So the beta of this lately versus the XLE and crude oil has just not panned out. And, uh, you know, you should have been looking at other stocks to, to be long other than this one. But what do you do with it now? Uh, you know, crude could hold here on the, on the weekly unfair lows, but uh, SWN – it's kind of been sell resistance, sell resistance. You've got a little bit of an area here to possibly buy if you're looking to just try something. But again, you've got you know better stocks in the XLE that have held up a little bit better. I'm trying to get something up here. While I'm waiting for that to come up, let's cover what's happening in the strongest stock in the universe, Apple. So, uh, again, nothing to really hang on to here. We've got, looks like we're trading 138 and a half. So, you know, here's the 240s. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, we, you, you could look at this right now, trading it back down into this profile high, 136.27, and use stops above 139.21. But, uh, again, pretty scary trade. All right, so we're not getting feed in right now. Lockheed Martin. Um, you know, this has been pretty interesting to watch this come up here into the highs last week and back off, but it's not exactly backing off that much. And, you know, taking a look at this, I mean, just backing up, understanding that all the perceived defense spending and they may, they may get, get their self negotiated to death here on that defense spending, by the way. But uh, as we look at this, you know, do you look at this as something to sell? In my opinion, you've got higher lows and compressing up into a point here. And this is kind of scary that the next announcement on defense spending and locking in some things, you know, this thing could do a moonshot. So, you know, putting resting orders on the buy side above here, I don't think it's a bad idea. Uh, you can usually have those held on the server at uh, your your uh, clearing firm or brokerage firm, so they don't they're not held on your machine. So, just having it out there to try to get in when it happens, possibly not a bad idea. On Lockheed Martin, let's take a look at General Dynamics. Uh, okay, so wow, that's a big wow. Okay, similar situation, not one, to, I mean, you know, just, you know, some folks could be thinking of taking some off the table here, but there's just no cracks in the armor. And um, that's been the case for a couple, since November, what was that, November? Ah, the glorious day, November 8th. So, you know, as you look at this, these are ones you can completely block out the short side um, and really look for new breakouts to trade or pullbacks. So the you know, support on this, believe it or not, is the lofty 188.24 on General Dynamics. Home Depot is stock I follow closely, um, really kind of giving you that bounce off the 146.33 in a market like this, just hanging in there big time. couple other stocks we want to hit before we get into some scanner picks here. Tesla. Yeah, so 241.53 is that big weekly line in the sand. Um, you know, could could have a chance to buy this. I mean, you know, look at the last couple of days relative to what the market's doing. Um, kind of hanging in there, but, you know, it's a scary stock to be in right now. And uh, 241.50, we kind of got that bounce, and, and that was really – all I cared to play around with with this particular stock. So that's the deal in Tesla. Let's take a look at uh, a couple of couple of bank stocks here. JP Morgan. See how these puppies are acting. So came off a little bit. I mean, you know, with bonds and notes coming off, 
you know, these guys don't mind that type of action. It looks like some some stocks changing hands here at the top, getting a little volatile. Um, but again, you've got 9104 sitting in your face as support. We're trading about 9130 this morning, it looks like. Let's take a look at J&J &J, because we had some uh, indications here. Now, they not there. So Johnson & Johnson still, I mean, there, there was a reason to take some weight off here. And I, I still stand by that. But now we've ramped up and used this as a new shelf or launching pad to move higher. The stock just looks incredible in addition to what's going on with the, uh, the Trump comments. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched a special event in Tampa with Tom O'Brien taking place March 18th, sponsored by Nadex. Tom O'Brien will be presenting two workshops for a combined two and a half hours of education, bisecting and dissecting his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. March 18th kicks off with a continental breakfast as we get everyone checked in, and that is followed by two 75-minute workshops with Tom O'Brien. The first workshop from 8.45 until 10 a.m. will cover quality volume, cause and effect, and ABC structures, and the second workshop from 10.15 until 11.30 a.m. will cover swing points, testing, and the Tiger Gartley. Tom will then wrap things up with a question and answer session, which will be followed by a Tiger luncheon social on the rooftop of the Westin Hotel. The best part is that it's all free, but you must register to attend. Visit the front page of TFNN.com for all the details and to sign up today, and we hope to see you in Tampa on March 18th. If you'll look to unearth a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new market safe core commodity CD from Everbank. This five year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to four equally weighted commodities gold, copper, WTI oil, and sugar in one powerful CD. With no pricing caps, you can potentially earn an unlimited upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across semi annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance, there's no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. With certain commodities on the rebound, now is the time to take advantage. The March 23rd funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once more, that's 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi guys, I'm showing Gilead Sciences right now. Um, just want you to take a look at this. Remember how this thing could do nothing wrong? It was just straight up and then just protracted, sell the resistance, sell the resistance. Here's where we're at. This is the daily, by the way. So here's where we're at. That's been since 2015, that protracted down move. Um, summer of 2015. So we're coming up on the uh, summer of 2017. That doesn't mean anything. But... Uh, New resistance on this. We looked at this actually a couple of weeks ago, 73.50, just kind of 
being in the mush here and then uh, being able to do a good risk reward trade. So what do you do with it now? Uh, uh, you know, I, th I think you just got to sell breakdowns below 67.70 now. I think any retracements back up into, which is highly possible, 73.70. There's just so many unknowns here. Um, so I'd rather just continue to turn the rents the same way and really block out the long side. I still don't think it's on sale. So that's, I guess, what I'm trying to say. Let's take a look at a couple other stocks that we have to. Uh, we're, let's take a look at uh, Microsoft. Now, I thought this thing might actually kind of take a break. I'm, I'm not interested in being short Microsoft ever. Uh, we've talked about that. Uh, but that little reversal is just cleaned up pretty quickly. And uh, this is the weekly on Microsoft. So you can see how we now are kind of shelving off here and sitting on the launching pad and uh, market kind of clarifying, clarifying that it's also a strong stock in general by this massive pullback in the S&Ps that we've had recently. I'm just joking about that. Uh, but again, you know, it's, it's nice to kind of find out what the strong stocks are when you do have a hint of a pullback in the S&Ps. I can't believe I'm saying that. Um, Amazon, you know, talked about not being short this, but maybe buying some puts on it, some lottery tickets. When, when things happen, they start happening. Uh, you never know when that's going to happen. But right now, it's pretty terrifying stock to short. I was listening to Tommy one time talk about, you know, he looked in the back of a, I guess he was behind a postal service truck on the weekend and looked, <laughs> the guy opened the door and every single box was Amazon. I mean, it is true, but it, at, at some point, you know, you're talking some of the things David White's been discussing about, you know, monopolies. And I, I feel more so than, than some of his comments about that. But, uh, you know, when it happens, it happens. So it's hard to it's hard to actually trade the underlying based on that. Utilities. Uh, okay, so this is the weekly on the XLU massive breakout. But, you know, the good news is now you've got a really cool situation here, I think, in the dailies. You know, rates going up, that's that's not the utilities friend. But uh, you, know, you kind of pull back quickly into an unfair low here on the, on the dailies. And uh, is that to be bought? I don't know. You, you know, the bonds and notes just kind of technically breaking down. It's pretty serious. The utilities probably have to be looking at that. But, you know, do you buy this or not? And um, it's a scary trade. Um, it looks like we're opening around 50 and a half. So we're opening a little bit lower. But, uh, you know, you might want to pass on this trade. I mean, these notes and bonds caving in like this is, uh, let's take a look at the uh, health care. All right, the XLV. Um, you know, you got to figure that this thing's going to complete the cycle down to 7388. I'm, I'm not opposed to, you know, trading that down. Steve Banger was talking about this trade, kind of like a sell the news type situation. I, th I think there's too many unknowns here right now. That healthcare plan, as you know, you guys are probably watching TV left and right. It's kind of the talk of the town right now. So the healthcare sector is going to be kind of a crapshoot. It's just going to be a tug of war. You guys know that in Congress, and who knows what's going to happen. And I haven't read the bill. So that's kind of the way I'm looking at that. Let's take a look at a couple other stocks that we need to take a look at. Uh, we hadn't looked at this in a while. Facebook. Everybody's favorite American, Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, well, no, he's not an American anymore. I forgot. Sorry about that. He's a Singaporean. All right. So as we look at the dailies, you know, this is a great, great example that things aren't too high. We've talked about you know, not looking at this from the short side for a long time, looking for areas to buy, give you really good there. So is it time to take some off? No. Uh, here's the weekly. There's that buy point there. New profile. Blocking out the long side. Breaking out. Blocking out the short side, excuse me. That's the drill there. 
Uh, let's take a look at Merck really quick. MRK. All right, so uh, another drug stock, obviously. Uh, I, I'm I'm not so sure that these aren't going to start start breaking down. So I'm looking to sell sell below 65.51 on Merck. It's had a heck of a run here, but you know, again, we got to wait for some lower numbers to sell that. I think there's just going to be too many unknowns coming out with that group. Uh, Philip Morris. We're going to take a look at this one. All right. So I think, you know, we started looking at this as breakouts way back when in January and uh, hadn't really given you any reasons to take anything off except for recently. Um, so what do you do with this now? I think you got to be out of this stock right now. Um, even though we don't have any weekly numbers uh, changing on the on the profile scene, but, you know, we're trading. We finished down at 109.72. Had a pretty big move yesterday on the downside. Uh, I think we could probably have a lower opening on it, and then maybe we'd start getting the yellow hints here on the weeklies, which would not be a good reason to stay long this anymore for right now. Let's take a look at Walt Disney, DIS. So here's the long term on Walt Disney. Uh, again, ramping up and going back and retesting the top of that profile. That was well. There's the there's the there's the election situation. All right, and uh, what do you do with it now? Had that profile appear below price action. You know that's pretty bullish in general. So here's the daily, and uh, really just kind of hanging in there, hanging in there, looking like it uh, wants to compress up into highs again. So this is not the one to look at from the short side by any means. PepsiCo. All right, so if you've been long this thing, I, you know, again, we're kind of pulling back to support yesterday and uh, being in the, the just the long term long move up here. 108.43 bounced yesterday pretty well. But, you know, I'm still looking at, you know, I don't know if this is going to stay in force. Friday's closed. If this stays yellow, it's a big deal. I probably probably time to look at just sitting tight on this one if you've been long maybe waiting for some lower numbers to pick it back up we're going to take a look at slumber jay and a couple other oil stocks when we come back folks Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under trading newsletters. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Um, everybody seeing my charts? Just making sure. Just doing a visual test here. Yep. Okay, cool. My Skype is completely locked up. Have you, have you guys been noticing Skype has just been weird? I don't know if you use it as much as I do, but uh, since Microsoft took it over, it's just been clunking around and upgrades galore. New ways to get my camera and watch me when I'm not thinking my camera's on, I guess. Anyway, let's take a look at Walmart. All right, here we go. So this is the, uh, the weekly on Walmart, and... Not exactly yet kind of piling back in the profile here, but this is kind of a something to be aware of if you're if you're in a long term investor in Walmart. I mean, obviously we kind of kind of been scaling off here lately, but uh if we have a weekly close below sixty, excuse me, seventy, you know, that this may actually drift a little lower. Um, still kind of in the noise area here on the long term weekly, so a, a reversal back above seventy before tomorrow's close, I'd feel okay about looking at this from the long side, actually. But right now, it's kind of a tenuous situation. Let's uh, let's hit the currencies really quick. Get that little machine up here. Here we go. See, I have a sea of black here. What's going on? Hmm. All right, let me try that again. Okay. That might be Skype related too. Anyway, all right, so we're not going to look at the currencies. Um, we're going to take a look at a couple more stocks. Let's take a look at Pfizer. All right, so we looked at Merck. Uh, here's Pfizer. What do you do with it now? Uh, kind of had a key reverse off of that 34th, 43. And, you know, might be able to pick this up at 33, 34. But, uh, again, it's a sector that's just, I think, going to have some volatility. So keep your uh, seatbelt on for this one. But, again, you know, like uh, pretty relatively strong stock. 3334 would be a chance to pick a battle in that particular stock. Let's take a look at Procter and Gamble. My most hated specialist of all times. Here we go. Uh, all right, so that's the weekly. Let's just kind of look at this 30,000 foot view. You know, I like this stock a lot. Um, and I'm looking at 89, 97, 90. I'm, li I'm just looking at it as support. Uh, it's kind of pulled back. I understand we've got a new profile attempting to appear, appear on the weekly here, but um, 
you know, I, you know, this is kind of a, the anti-stock and it's kind of holding up both ways here, which is nice. So if the market comes off, you might see this thing move up anyway. So 90 is a good area on that one. Let's take a look at travelers. I'm hearing things again. I don't know what just went off. Uh, let's see. Uh, travelers. So here, here's the long-term view on this. And I'm looking at this now that 121.93, 122, maybe banking some risk reward off of that down into 118.84. Kind of had uh, key reversed itself here to the point where I think any retracements now could be sold. So uh, looking at selling 121.93 on this. We're going to take a look at McDonald's. My favorite place to not eat. Uh, here we go. So again, you know, kind of up here in the ether on the weekly, but uh, starting to look at this as nothing to still try to short. But uh, you know, I think you got better longs out there than this right now. Let's take a look at Netflix really quick. All right, so the other day we were talking about a possible retracement back down into those lower numbers, 137.29 off of this 143.79. That pretty much happened. That trade's over right now. I had an email about this. Right now it's like no leverage whatsoever, so this is kind of trades over type situation. Let's take a look at Twitter, our president's favorite mode of communication. Regardless of that, the stock sucks and uh you know you had to take it for what it's worth i mean this thing's not on sale we've talked about that it's there's nothing to play defense on down here find some calls lottery tickets like an amazon type thing you know you could kind of keep keep doing that and if something happens it happens you're not risking a lot and you definitely don't have to pay attention to it so buying some long calls out of the money not a huge risk on that as a takeover target at some point. But again, that's kind of like the risk one to make 100 scenario. A little bit better odds than playing the lottery in general, in my opinion. International paper. Okay, so we're, we're back down into support here. I don't mind buying this again at this area, 5140. On IP. Take a look at IBM. All right, so pretty strong situation. Got that last week, kind of hint of a new profile coming out that's happened. Uh, so 172.32 could completely be in order on this one. Here's the daily. I think we're going to break here on, on IBM a little bit. Um, 179.33, trading below there. I don't mind taking a shot, trading it down to 172.32, and looks like we're printing this morning around 179 and a half. So uh, kind of getting the woosh sound of some people trying to get out the door at the same time. Might not be a bad a bad trade on IBM, just a trade. It's not a, it's not a long-term scene there. Intel, hadn't looked at this in a long time, so let's take a look at it. All right, so... This one, I kind of like on the short side. I like it completing the cycle down below 33.91. That would be the targets on Intel. Let's take a look at Honeywell really quick, H-O-N. All right, so here, here's the weekly on Honeywell. Just man just an unbelievable move up and uh is it too high no uh anytime you have a chance to buy stocks like this i think you just got to keep doing it it just you know could have a cup could have another double on your hands here gold let's just revisit this okay so you know i still don't think it's time to buy gold um you on the long term you don't have any really good kind of indications on the on the long side but 
on the ultra short, you, you do have a chance to kind of play some defense here on the bottom of the 240, so we're back down there now. And uh, targets up top will be 12 15 on a short little move up. Be right back. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Okay, Skype eventually crashed here. Let me try to get my den back up. I had to reboot my computer, so bear with me. Ugh. Okay. Slowly but slowly but surely. Guys in the den, sorry about that. Oh, let's I'm trying to get this back up. Here we go. Almost. There we go, guys. And here's our charts. Wow, was that quick. Here we go. All right, so we were talking about uh, here's gold. This is the 60 minute on gold. And, uh, you know, obviously, this, this is the ultra short term. We don't talk about this a lot. Reached that and kind of backed up. And I'm looking at the 240s here. You guys can see my charts, I hope now. 
I'm looking at the 240s, um, you know, not out of the noise area yet, 1206. I still think we could move higher on gold, but again, put your stops in. All right, let's take a look at the S&Ps. You guys are seeing my charts, I hope. S&Ps, so, uh, you know, the talk this morning, we, you know, kind of had that close in the box day before, came back and retested that 7173 area and backed off. I still think that's a pretty good lid on the S&Ps right now, and we could drift into 2343 and a half overall. Uh, crude. You know, we are bouncing off of this unfair low here on the weekly, 48.67. I think we reached 48.79. So, again, big move down in a, in a very long-term profile. Remember, the longer these profiles are enforced, the more impact these inflection points have. So when they're, this was broken, obviously, I was trying to buy that. But, uh, again, you've got a chance to buy it lower or buy the breakout. So here's the buy it lower scene, 48.67. That's a really cool situation. And actually, he's trying to get away from that area now which is nice to see. Okay, just to do a little more recap, the notes and bonds just look like death and that weekly close below those uh, numbers on the weekly unfair lows are huge. Short term on the S&Ps, I'll just I didn't give these on the 240s. Here's kind of where we're at. I actually think we can head lower. I'm kind of happy that we did retrace back up into that area. Dollar. So here's the situation on the dollar. Uh, again, not interested in looking at this from the long side right now. Just kind of waiting to see if we can migrate back down below 101.78. A couple other usual suspects we covered earlier. Here's here's that 30-year look. This thing's just kind of starting to really, really get some momentum here and shooting for these lows down here previously made back in uh, December. There's the uh, 148.29. And we talked about the utilities relative to that. Maybe not picking this up right now. Uh, let's see, we're trading. Yeah, 50.59 is that daily for on the utilities. I'd probably pass on that as something to try to buy. We're going to take a look at copper really quick, too. We never hit that earlier. I wanted to just kind of reference that. Here's the copper trade. And, you know, that weekly scene, here's where we're at right now. Um, not opposed to buying that, actually. We'll be right back, guys. Or, excuse me, stay tuned for Basil. He's going to be filling in for Larry. You guys have a great day. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.